Yo, what's good, man? It's your boy DT3, man, and I'm back at you with another video, man. New media, notification, gang. God Squad. It's what it is, man. Look, check this out, man. Artur Betterbeef versus Marcus Brown. It's a good fight. For like the first three, four rounds. Until the headbutt happened, you sip my coffee. <sighs> to be real with y'all, what I saw in that fight is what I see in a lot of African American fighters. Is we got the skills to pay the bills. Yep, yep, that we do. Yep. We obtain that. But we don't have the conditioning. And we don't train strength. And we fight these dudes. That are strong powerhouse dudes. That either come from Mexico. Or Ukraine. Or some either some foreign country. And they don't necessarily beat us. Because they outskill us. Meaning African American fighters. They beat us because they got more conditioning, they more disciplined. And they and and they and they can do what they can do a lot longer than most African American fighters can do what they do. And that's what I saw in that fight. Marcus Brown was done I think honestly uh 6th 7th round. He was done. Done. He was beat then. Okay. Uh, a lot of people talk about how the left hook to the body is really what did. Really, if you look at the replay, it was the left hook to the head. That was the beginning of the end. If you look at the end of the fight, the punch that, was, that took the fight out of Marcus Brown was when he hit him with that left hook. And he backed into the ropes, and you could see it was over. You saw it in that man's face. It was he was done. He was over. It was nothing left. He just did not want to go down. The fight in him was it was no more fight in that man at that point. Once Arthur hit him with that left hook, bow, and he went back into the ropes. You saw the look in his face. It was over. It was over. All Arthur had to do was just hit him enough. To get him to go down. And when he caught him with that uppercut. And his head popped up. He was like alright I'm good. Alright that's that's enough for me. You saw and when he was on his knees. You saw it in his face. He didn't want no more. And the cold part about it is. Marcus Brown did not come in there. To lose that fight. You saw it when. When Arthur came up to him. And patted him. And he was just. That, that man did not show up to lose. That man is hurting right now. And that's what I see in a lot of African-American fighters is when they fight fighters that can fight and they can do what they can do a lot longer. And you don't train to have the pop to keep those dudes off of you or to back them up. You got to have that. You got to have the pop to back these to keep these dudes off of you. It's, it's a lot. You, you can only pitter pat and pot shot for so long you gotta hit these dudes you can't be up here pity patting and being slick and thinking you're gonna be cute the whole 12 rounds you gonna have to sit there and fight these people sooner or later it's gonna take a whole hell of a lot more than you being slick and moving your feet that take energy you gonna have to sit there you gonna have to deal with something so sooner or later, you're going to have to sit in the pocket with this man. You're not going to avoid that. The whole 12 rounds that you in there with him. Accept that. So do you have the durability to sit in the pocket, take those shots, counter off those shots, because you know they coming. No matter what you do or what you think you're going to do, them shots is still Coming from Artura Better Beef. And it was something 
that I haven't heard yet. I haven't heard it yet. If it's out there, okay, it's out there. But I ain't heard no real compliments about Arthur Better Be's feet. None. That man was not just bulldozing markets and doing dumb shit. He was showing feet, shifting every time Arthur, every time uh, uh, Marcus is uh, curled up in, in, in all the shit he bro, was putting angles up. Bro, Arthur got it. Arthur got it. For real, for real. And he, he could, man, that dude is a monster. For real, for real. He got it. I don't think he got it for Canelo right now, but I think a couple of more fights, because he still, he, he don't even got 20 fights under him yet. Get a couple more fights, just keep keep pushing Arthur. He ain't, he not, I don't think he ready for Canelo right, right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's ready for kind of all right right now. I think he need a couple of more fights. But at least three, maybe four more fights. And man, man. Woo! It's gonna be something else. But <clears throat> Archer got feet. I'm not saying he got like the most amazing feet in the world. Don't don't over don't take it as an over exaggeration. Like I'm saying his feet is just so fucking amazing type shit. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, but by the way they advertise better beef. And, and and when you see him fight, it's like, no, he more than what y'all what y'all putting him out there to be. He a lot more than that. He bring a lot more to the table than just punching power and pressure. He got good feet, too. He know he'll shift on your ass and cre- catch you with some nice shit. Like, he nice. He nice. He a good, he's a good pressure for, he's good at staying in the phone booth. Like, he good at that. Like, if he, he get you in the phone booth, he, he'll handle you in that bitch. But... What I see from uh, what I saw from Marcus Brown is in the beginning he was sharp, boom, 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 doing all that sweet shit. But it's like you gotta understand, and it's not everybody was like, well, he was downloading, you know, Arthur was downloading. I'm not saying that he wasn't doing that. What I'm saying is Marcus and most African American fighters is really good at that's piling up the points early in the fight. But when the real fight starts to happen, <laughs> we don't usually have the gas or the pop to maintain and handle. At the end of the day, yes, this is boxing. It is a boxing match. It is your boxing skills versus stay boxing skills. Get that. I understand that. But understand, at the end of the day, it's a fight. Okay, you fight somebody, okay, and you using the style of boxing as a means to fight somebody else. It's still a fight, no matter how you want to look at it, no matter how you want to bend it and 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 say this. Say it's a fight, dog. Somebody coming in there trying to hurt you, trying to trying, trying to take your head off, real rap. So you can get as cute and all you want. That's nice. That's sweet. But at the end of the day, bruh, this man trying to take food off your table, money out your pocket. And I promise you, if somebody was to try to do that shit on the street and it was a fight, a real fight, man versus man, hands on hand, shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. Trust me, you is not finna be on no sweet shit trying to be cute. You going to be trying to kill him. Real rap. She had the same fucking mentality when you get in that ring this dude is coming in here trying to kill me he coming in my house trying to take food off my table i told you before dude trying to sell dope on my block fuck you doing you got me fucked up you should man y'all should be in there trying to fuck these dudes up in the real way why you think why you think Mexican fighters are so annoying to fight? I fought them. I know. Okay, I'm not saying that because of boxing. I'm saying that because I've been in the gym with them. I've trained with them. I fought them. I know. Them and Asians. Asians are some little slick bastards. But the Mexican motherfuckers got heart, bro. They not no punk. They not finna back down. 
They not finna take your shit. They train. The way they train, bro, they train to hurt you. Every punch has, I'm here to fuck you up and fuck shit up and then leave. That's what I'm here to do. I'm coming to fuck shit up and then I'm leaving. That's it. Thank you. See you later. Bye bye. That's how they train. How I see most of my African American brothers train. We train cool. We get the skills up. We make people look stupid and laugh, pop up, pop, all that shit. But when it when the real fight come, when it come where you have to be in the trenches, in that ring, it's gonna happen. That cute shit only gonna get you so far. Then y'all don't know how to utilize it to bend it to your will to where you can actually use it to your advantage. No. It's not about it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. You can look as cute as you want in the first two, three rounds of a fight. You can look as cute as you want. But when that fifth, sixth, and seventh round hit, and this dude is still coming, he's still hitting you, he's still put, applying that pressure, and you ain't throwing nothing or throwing enough to keep this motherfucker off of you, it's going to be a problem. That's why I like seeing Jerron Boots Enos train. Because when he trained, he actually trained to throw hard, thudding power shots. He trained. Like, watch him. Watch Boots Ennis. Watch Boots Ennis. Watch um, Sean Porter. Watch um, uh, Errol Spence. Watch uh, Jamal or Jamel Charlo. When they train, they train to throw hard, Studying shots. Okay. Those are the few African American fighters. When they train, they throw hard, thudding shots. Because that's how they fight. They fight that way. But the ones that want to be cute and doing the shell, and all, I'm telling you, that shit only going to get you so far. Tia Fimo, that's why you think he got hit so much. Bro, that shit is that shell shit. That shoulder roll shit only going to get you so far. You going to have to eventually get in them trenches and scrap. It's not no game. It's cool to have a skill and be slick. But when that fight happens, when the fight come, when the real fight come, are you going to have the gas to be doing all that slick shit in the pocket? Because you're not going to be able to get away from this motherfucker. But Marcus Brown was defeated about the sixth, se seventh round for show. Seventh round for show. Because soon as soon as they butted heads, soon as they butted heads, the fight, the fight was really over for him. But when I saw the fight was out of Marcus, when he had no more fight in him, bro, six, seventh round, I'm seventh round for sure. That's when I knew. Seventh was when I knew. But probably late in the sixth, because he started to curl up and you know be in the high guard on the ropes about the sixth round. But when I saw the fight was really out of Marcus, seventh round, he ain't had nothing in him. He done. Everything after that was all heart guts after the seventh. Before that, it was he, he was in it. <laughs> he was in the fight before that. But once that seventh round got to him, mm -mm. nope, nope. And if you watch the end of the fight, and if you look at the end, the punch that got him was the left hook. Once he hit him with that left hook, Mark, he won't no more. He's done. Everything else was just like, you know, just, just to get him out of there. He didn't have nothing else. He didn't have nothing in him after that. Real rap. You know what I mean? I feel bad for Marcus because he really, because cause you got to think. This is a man that prided himself on being a champion. He did a lot. He been through a lot to become a world champion and to get to that, to get to that point and have that opportunity, which is very rare for a fighter to get.
in the sport of boxing. It's hard to get them world title opportunities. And to get it against a guy that you probably felt that you could beat. You had the skill set and everything to beat him. But you didn't have the endurance. You didn't have the stamina. And you didn't have the strength and conditioning to do it. You didn't have it. You had the skills. You had you had that. You had decent enough feet. Cool. Until the real fight came. And it wasn't about your Philly shell and all that. It was about, man, man, can you stop me? Can you stop me from advancing and doing what I do? And the answer was no. Oh, you could do all that cute shit, pit, 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 pity patting with the jab, throwing little nice little right hands. And I'm not saying that Marcus didn't throw no hard shots, no power shots from his from him. No, I didn't, I'm not saying that. But his power shots didn't do shit. Artur kept coming. So, and then when you see certain shit not working, and then this motherfucker still keep coming, what you gonna do? You took the fight out of him. I ain't gonna lie. I felt bad. I feel bad for Marcus. I feel bad for dude, for real. But it is what it is. Artur better be is that dude. I don't think he ready for a Canelo fight right now. I'm not saying like the limelight. No, that should be too big for him. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying just I don't think he ready for a Canelo fight right now. I think he just need a couple more fights. Three to four more fights, if not less, and and depending on who who those who those opponents are, will depend on will, will determine my opinion after that. But right now, I'm just saying I think now that now if it was to happen, I'm not saying it wouldn't be a cool fight. But I just think that uh, he he need a couple of more fights before he uh, step in with Canelo. I do give him props that he's willing to fight these dudes that he's willing to fight these top motherfuckers. Hats off to you, because, you know, we living in an era where a lot of fighters ain't trying to fight, mainly PBC niggas, but anyway, where a lot of fighters not trying to fight the top dudes that's out there. You know what I mean? But for real, for real, Marcus, you did fight a cool fight until about the sixth round. That's when mm, it was about over for you. And it was really over. Actually, the fight was really over once um, they clashed heads. Once Arthur got that headbutt and it was like, and it was on the verge of them stopping the fight and it was like one more round. Woo! Fuck you, tell him that, folk. Arthur went ham. He went ham. You know what I'm saying? And the rest is history. I do want to see Marcus Brown fight again. I really do. I want to see you come back, bro. Um, I do believe you got the potential to be a world champion, bro. Just get your uh, work on your power, throwing more power shots and being able to sustain throwing power shots for 12 whole rounds. You, I think, you, I think fighters nowadays, y'all should train for 15 rounds. And if you are training for 15 rounds, I think you should train for a hard, ugly, nasty dog fight. Like you need to be trained for this, for, for what you went through. You should be training for stuff like that. And I don't think y'all train for that. I think y'all trying to get cute, be sweet, like, ah, oh, he ain't going to be able to do this. Yeah, because you sold issues. And it's like, man, that's cool and everything to build your confidence up and everything. But you need to train to be able to throw hard, thudding, killer shots to the head body for for 15 long rounds like you need to be able you need to be able to do that you should be able to sustain that because if you can't against these dudes that's got real strength and conditioning that's really disciplined that's really gonna commit to what they do you're gonna it's gonna be sad sad day t-rexy real rap trying to tell you dt3 NBBC, NBBC forever. The Simba dedication is here. Salute to you, 100.